Larry Pratt is the executive director of Gun Owners of America. I've invited him back in the hope we can have a more meaningful discussion tonight about guns in America. Mr. Pratt, welcome back to you. And thank you for having me. Why did you agree to come back? Well, um, I thought maybe we could help you sell some more newspapers. More newspapers? Increase your viewership. Right, we're a television channel. You're aware of that? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, of course. If you were at the meeting with Vice President Biden tomorrow with the NRA and Walmart and others, what would you be saying? That the discussion uh, has not been uh, going anywhere that we can tell in a productive way. Uh, we're not talking about making it so people can defend themselves precisely in these gun-free zones that have been the scene of all of our mass murders for the last 20 years. Uh, hopefully, uh, at some point, we're going to come to the realization that repeating the same policy year after year, getting the same deadly results, is only going to get us the same deadly results the next time. Right. So your solution, if you were there in that meeting, would be to arm every school, every church, every hospital, uh, everywhere that the members of the public could be. You certainly would uh, want to encourage people who are qualified to carry a concealed firearm to be able to do so in a school zone. Right now, that is illegal in all but a couple of our states and some of our institutions of higher learning. But by and large, it's uh, prohibited. Uh, that needs to stop because we have been using those as magnets where all of our mass murders have been occurring in these gun-free zones. It just seems uh, that we uh, have a fixation with the idea that no defense is a good defense, and that's not a good idea. Here's my issue with this uh, gun-free zone claim that you keep making. You're not the only one that makes it. Is that, unless I'm wrong, these mass shooters pretty well know they're going to die. I mean, they go to kill a lot of people, and then they know at some stage they're going to die because all mass shooters, pretty much all of them, get killed. And frequently uh, they kill themselves. Right. So why on earth would the fact that it's a gun-free zone make any difference to them? Uh, they're looking for, uh, it would seem, in their sick minds, uh, to see if they can outdo the Virginia Tech slaughter or uh, some other thing that might be in their perverted minds. Uh, so why should we give them a neon sign that says, well, see if you can do better than the last guy over here? Bobby, you know there were armed security people at Virginia Tech. You know that there was an armed sheriff at Columbine. And he you know, fled. Well, and you know that at Fort Hood, one of the most heavily guarded military bases in the world, 13 people were killed and 29 wounded. So and you, it was a gun-free zone. There were no guns right. on base unless you were an MP. Right, but it remains one of the most heavily guarded military bases in the world. But a lot of good that did. Right. My point to you, Mr. Pratt, is that even where you have a mass of well-trained people and a mass of firearms, you can still have massacres. You'd accept that? Um, especially if you're telling the potential victim, you can't be armed. You have to wait for the cavalry to get here 5, 10, or in the case of Newtown, 20 minutes later. I find that unconscionable. Do you know how many mass shootings have been in America in the last 30 years? And by mass shootings, I mean the FBI definition of four people or more in the same place. I don't have a number uh, for the last um, 30 years. We've uh, looked at that at Gun Owners of America for the last 20 years. I, 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 can tell you, I can tell you the answer is 62. Do you know of those 62 mass shootings, how many times a civilian has actually taken out the shooter? Um, it is probably not that many because we make it so hard for people to be able to defend themselves. Do you want, do you want well, I mean, hang on. I mean, you've got three. But there are well, examples. Wait, 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 wait a minute. You have, you have in America. 300 million guns in circulation. You wouldn't contest that. 99 laws have been passed since 2009 to make it easier for Americans to own guns, to carry them in public, harder for the government to track. Um, what I'm seeing here is a picture of ever more relaxed gun laws and a spike in mass shootings. And in fact, six of the 12 worst ever mass shootings in America have come in the last five years. And the reason for citing no, the last 30, well, it is, it is true. Um, it, I'm not, these are facts. These aren't things which are open to conjecture. Well, you can laugh. You always laugh when we talk about this. I don't find it remotely funny. Um, but the point is that there's been an escalation in the number of mass shootings in the last five or six years and also the scale of them. The Aurora movie theater shooting was the single worst shooting in American history in terms of people hit by one shooter. And the Sandy Hook shooting 
was the single worst school shooting in the history of America. And yet every time these things happen, Mr. Pratt, you come out and you're very vocal and you're proud of what you say. And you basically say the same thing. If everybody had been armed, somebody would have killed the shooter and prevented the massacres. You know, we're, we're, uh, if, you, if we would be talking the way you want to talk, we're not going to talk about making it easy for people to defend themselves. We're not going to talk about the times when mass shootings did not become mass murders because there was somebody on the scene who was able to shoot back. Right, but again, nor but again, 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 we, again let me jump in. Let me jump in. Nor are we talking about the federal government well, this is why, this sponsoring is, right, a program of putting guns in the hands this, of the Mexican cartel, resulting in the death of now over 400 Mexicans and counting, Mr. Pratt, and let's we're say, not let's even say, talking about Mr. Eric Pratt, Holder and Pratt. his Justice Department and their culpability in complicity to commit mass murder. Okay, let's say on the point I was trying to make, which is, um, Mr. Pratt, Mr. Pratt, let me say on the point I was trying to make, that in the last 30 years there have been 62 mass shootings, not a single one has ever been thwarted by a civilian, despite America being a heavily armed Country. That's My a point. circular argument, sir, because it's if it's thwarted, it doesn't fact. rise to the level of being a mass shooting. Mm -hmm. It gets stopped in the, it gets nipped in the bud. So, of course, we're not going to have those in those grisly statistics because a good guy with a gun was able to get there before the, the body count mounted. General McChrystal, uh, one of America's finest modern generals, uh, was on Anderson Cooper earlier. He's been doing the rounds with a, a, a new a project that he has, a book. And he said he doesn't want his family anywhere near the assault weapons that I am particularly exercised about. We have a clip here from Morning Joe to show you why he feels so strongly. I spent a career carrying uh, typically either an M16 and then later an M4 carbine.